Hello everybody, David Herman, alias Does the Artist. Two minutes to four in the afternoon on the last day of the month of February, February 28th, uh, 2018. And I've enlarged my monitor skull, some type of a cartoon illustration weirdness I'm working on. And worked on it a little bit, and now I'm bringing you guys into the picture where I'll work maybe another half hour. So this is the monitor in the bottom of the skull, which is some kind of a crystal type thing. I've worked a little better on shaping uh, this holder, this jaw that's kind of on a sideways angle due to some pivot that's taken place and things like that. You're going to watch me kind of work on it, just so you can see how I do some airbrush on this. So I'm going to work up these uh, curls that I've put in to represent sacred geometry, the flow of ripples, the way they intersect. Notice this one comes around. This one comes here, but it's separate from this side, which comes around, which is separate from this side, and so on. So I'm going to do some painting and some subtle stuff. <clears throat> and I'm going to bounce all over, but I'm going to stay in this area for the most part, I think, in this video. So uh, let's... Let's work on some of this. What I do is take my eyedropper when I work in something very complex with all these colors. Because this is a small section and you can probably see, you know, 100 variations of color or more. And I'll, I'll select a, a section with my eyedropper. Say that tone right there. And that tone shows up here in our um, tool stick, you know, that you get in Photoshop right there that guy um, and then what I do is I go back to brush and I'll dial in a size of my brush you know you can see here if I move it down here that it bigger or smaller depending on how I move my uh, finger on my little tablet and then uh, again, I draw on the Intuos Pro Medium, which is like a slate, just a black slate, on a little angle stand while I stare at a monitor that's above my head uh, on my standing desk. And then I'll, uh, okay, so I pick here, I have a color, I may move over here to make it lighter, okay? And that way you're not really, you know, you stay in the blues, you don't have a yellow or a, uh, another color contaminating it if you're trying not to introduce that into it at the moment, like light or something. And if it still looks flat, like this is, let's say, so I'm going to bring this around, just kind of fill out this donut. So uh, a lot of times I do these donut type shapes, which really are a torus shape, but not completely connected, because the torus, again, in sacred geometry, very, very important symbol. So I like to work with purple too, so we're going to get some purple right about there. Go back to the brush. I'm going to kind of come from inside here and work my purple up into there for some depth. Again, this is very much enlarged, so this thing would probably be like a tenth of an inch or something in the actual illustration when we scale it down. But to get that cool look, you got to do this sometimes. So they have that inner circle, and then I'm going to take a little black, and I'm going to separate my gem object. I have no name for this object, really, because I want it to seem crystal, magical, otherworldly, uh, but alive in that it could be pulsating, but not wired by uh, electrical wire yet still a functioning something. If any of that makes sense, let me know. <laughs> so yeah, organic things that pulsate and live, but they don't need to be wired like electrical stuff. Okay. Things that exhibit the properties of the multiverse. But we're not going there in this dialogue. Okay. And then I pick another color over here, maybe. 
have a little bit of that blue going into this uh, just because the way I think about color and do things with it do not necessarily have to follow the things that they teach you in school the things they teach you in school will of course produce art now get me wrong and it will produce art that's totally pleasing to the human eye but if you're trying to think outside the box and create original things you will do original things yourself now whether or not mine are pleasing to the eye and aesthetically this and that is up to the viewer to behold but knowing all the traditional rules and I break them most of the time uh, I do so with a reason. The reason is to get some kind of a different look that is not common to an earthly look. You know, earthly you can go, okay, I recognize that. That's the guy's pajamas. Or that picture has a guy in blue jeans. Or something like that. Or this machine has a piston. It has a flange. It has springs. Um, I'll put some familiar kind of objects in something, but I won't necessarily build the entire structure of an object around things that are 100% familiar to us. I like to go outside that box. So this kind of closes up like an artichoke would towards this red center, all these things folding in. But what are these things? Well, we don't know. We just don't know. We're not going to know because I'm not telling anybody. If I knew, I would I wouldn't tell you anyways. <laughs> so yeah, inventing stuff for art is fun. You know, if you're doing graffiti on a wall, you don't get to erase. You uh, you just go at it and you keep changing and modifying something, and you know you come up with something. But uh, if you had a bad stroke or something like that, you may just turn it into something else. And that's crucial when you draw, I think, to be able to adapt. Don't be so set in your ways that you go bonkers if you have a stray stroke. Take that mistake, as you would call it, or that error, own it, and modify it. Own it, though. Own it. You did it own it yes it's more interesting to say I was doing this when this accidentally happened and then I realized almost intuitively I could learn from that because I think I was being shown or I think I realized this or for some reason that error gave me insight into this just Forget about being perfect is what I'm getting at. We're not. And it's nothing really to worry about unless you're trying to be number one in the Olympics or something. Where they have specific categories and specific things they're measuring to compare you against others. But art is not like that. Not to me. To me, it's both technical, both highly structured, and it's not technical and it's intuitive um, it's experimental it can be anything you want so again I had no idea what I was going to draw with this if you watch the first part it's, it's like a second part here it doesn't really matter if they're numbered you get the idea that different things are happening more spontaneous and less controlled but when you want to create a certain look like let's say you want something to be shiny or you want something to be soft or you want something to be organic looking or round uh, then that's where the technical part comes in like you've learned that you know say a shiny object is high contrast between the darks and lights on a simple level or a fur is not going to have any sharp angles and hard edges you know to look like fur 
So those kind of things. And energy sources or things like I, I'm putting in that could possibly be dramatic, like the innards of a creature, you know, giving life through uh, organic intermingling of matter and uh, what appears to be some type of a hardware on a different level interacting so yeah it's lots of fun make up stuff do it just go with it and so that's what I'm doing here and I'm trying to bring this together delicately And if you think your paint's going down too harsh, where it's not enough transparency, just change your opacity up there. Introduce other stuff. So what am I doing actually? I'm defining different planes in an organic kind of a slug looking shape, right? So this is the most coming at you the most, this white. This is lighter up here, darker underneath here, morphing and twisting a shape like an electrical wire or slug or something into another shape and so on. So I bring things closer, I make things recede, and I don't really worry as much as you might think about the color in a traditional sense. Now you might say, well, yeah, we notice that. But what makes it work, again, is picking the right chroma, the value of these colors, um, to appear like they're coming at you or receding. So now I want to do something light with that color. So I go to my eyedropper. Pick it, see it in the above shell there, it's down here, hit that square, move over. I'm in the same color field, but now I have a lighter shade. Then I can take my pen, or my brush, and put a highlight that totally works with that, see? If I want one over here, if I want one in here. And if it's not solid enough, so to speak, you want less fuzzy, take your uh, density up, or your opacity up, sorry, and just press that a little. And if you think it's got to be even brighter, then just go back to your box. Nope. Let me get the eye, I don't know what I did there. Excuse me. Let me go to my eyedropper. Select the darker tone. Go to the box. Select the lighter tone. And then go to my brush. There's the exact steps of a lighter tone in that sort of selection of color. You know, sometimes you, uh, while working and trying to talk, you're also trying to come up with a word best suited to describing a function in art. And sometimes you got to make up that the way the words go together. So another thing I'm practicing when I draw is the articulation of some nonverbal comment, verbal. Uh, activity into a verbal description of what I'm doing. I want to practice that. So and then as I kind of do, I'm as I want to do, I'm keeping this kind of a very organically changing 
you know, you see it's changing. It can be morphing around. It has to have a, uh, to me, a fluid field right, right here, like it's, uh, it's not etched in stone. You could imagine a process taking place. Uh, shifting, changing entities and things, morphing of matter, shapes, some subtle stuff here and there, like this, where I don't press that hard, but each one's a little bit different in size, different in tone, makes it all work. And then I can put some darker purple, perhaps, bluish tone in here is a delineating factor, something that separates, like that, and then I might want a more of an actual white highlight in here, just building that up, In the way that I do, however I do to make things, whatever they are, as the way I perceive. Okay, it can smooth out stuff if I'm working along. I saw that little jiggle, didn't like it, you know, where my brush crossed over and hit something. This is kind of cool how it melts almost looking like a creamsicle, some food or some <laughs> tasty thing. Ah, uh, yes, I just ate my vegetables, my, some fruit, some hemp milk with Ovaltine. <laughs> Different tastes and things I like. Alright. Yay! Okay, let's, uh, let's... It's very subtle here. Putting that together. <laughs> And now I'm going to back off that tone, but I'm going to work it with the gray a little bit right here. Bring this towards the inside a little more. Soften it up there, okay, and then have it protrude here. That. And this is kind of looking cool now. I'll put a little highlight here and there, maybe down here, maybe in here. And now I'll work some of this crystal again. So I have all these cracks in this monitor. And I'm thinking now about its nature. Like if these two were close together, on the same plane of highlight. I do like so. Bring that together. It's too bright, maybe? I don't know. So let's see. We'll do like this. Some crystal work. It would come up like that. It can be subtle things. They're connecting. This again is to look crystalline, but a uh, monitor in its external size. And yet, um, foreign to human thinking, but close enough to resemble something. Even though, uh, as a human being, I probably couldn't come up with anything non-human. <laughs> That's a funny statement, but we're still drawing on our, pardon me, our collective experiences from being infants till adults, and there's a lot of things in our heads. So uh, the way we hodgepodge them together in art, or technically create them in art. It's hard to have an original thought, so I'm getting it. Or really original. 
And this is working for me, and this could all be behind another glass that's uh, closest to the viewer, like a flat plane here, which I could even highlight. So, uh, first I'm going to do some subtle stuff. And there I have some nice depth, you know. Depth of feel, depth of design. Yep. And then see how there's this shadow here? Well, I could add some of that kind of a shadow around three or four sides. And that also uh, sculpts it into, like, dimensionally a little bit, like, so if you kind of, that might be a little light, so I'll go up even further, and uh, like so. Just kind of makes the reflection of this gray surface into the crystal monitor. And giving it that bevel, that bezel edge, so it gives it more credence. You have this lit up in here from whatever circumstances are causing it to light. And I'm going to go real dark for a second. And you can do this on a layer. Right now, today, I'm just working all on one layer. I don't know why, what I was thinking of, but that's okay. And parallel that to it. Like that. Some subtle. Keeping these bumps and gyrations. And then uh, so maybe I want this curved a little, like that, or that, or that one, and that one. So that stuff's interesting. Back to a highlight, maybe here. have to be as dark like that. Let's save this. Okay. Now, uh, let's see here. Thinking, thinking. I'm going to move over. To here for now and at the end I can sharpen things that or blur them or whatever I want but right now I'm still constructing <clears throat> constructing constructing another opening I see here so I'm accent given a hard edge to make an opening then I will use a color to bring this forward I will use a color on this edge so you can see that in here it's open I will take some black and I will darken it in the darkest innermost corner. Then I'll put a highlight around that edge. Subtly. Like that. Maybe this one here, like this. And now you can see from far away that's an opening. And so this edge is a little bit blurry, this organics nature. So we're going to work a little bit on this. And there you could see how maybe a French horn or 
something as valves, it can remind you of valve work or something. So you can, you have to have maybe something in your mind sometimes when you're trying to create a look of a thing. Uh, if I want this color darker, I will take my brush, I will go here. Uh, I mean my, excuse me one second while I edit that out. I will take my eyedropper, sorry, and touch it. And now I have this square down here. I'm somewhere there. I'm going to go somewhere there for a darker shade. of the background and then turn that brush back on and kind of go around the edge of this subtly with just the darker tone of that background not a black and I could even play with the background with the highlight edge and make it look like it was part of the foreground in a multiverse separated by a division. But there. So that's kind of cool. Let's view this at the actual size so you can get some scale. And then see how, oh, well, this is nice and crisp now. And if it's at different sizes, like so, um, what am I trying to do? Enlarge. Sorry there. I was moving. Okay, you can see different amounts of detail depending on how close you got to it. But the nice thing is, when you're looking at it uh, like at print size, it should be 9 by 12 inches. That's kind of what I see there. So, I'm working very slowly because I'm, I'm doing some intricate kind of coolness to this thing. Excuse me. That I get into. So that's just some kind of cool stuff there. Thanks for tuning in. You guys have a good night. Ciao.